I would like to present to you a case for the historical existence of Jesus. Lately, there have been many people who have been claiming that there is no evidence to verify his actual existence. It has become so widely claimed by recent speakers that most of us take for granted what we have been told, although it is rare to find anyone who has actually looked for themselves to verify this claim. First, you should know that this view is a new one. All throughout history, skeptics used to claim that Jesus didn't rise from the dead, or that his miracles were only parlor tricks, or that the disciples stole his body from the tomb, but they never claimed he didn't exist. Claiming that he never existed only became possible recently, due to the long period of time that has passed since the first century. In actuality, there is much more evidence for Jesus' existence than there is for almost any important or famous person of that time. In this presentation, we will be using only non-biblical evidence. In other words, we won't be using the Bible to prove the Bible. We will also be stopping after every account to address the typical skeptical questions about each claim. I warn you though, if you watch this video you will no longer be able to believe that there is no evidence for the existence of Jesus, and you might even start to question the integrity of the research of those that have told you that there isn't. I will be quoting from a website called thedivineevidence.com, and I will link it in the description section of this video. Cornelius Tacitus lived from 55 to 120 AD. Tacitus was a 1st and 2nd century Roman historian who lived through the reigns of over half a dozen Roman emperors. Considered one of the greatest historians of Rome, Tacitus verifies the biblical account of Jesus' execution at the hands of Pontius Pilate, who governed Judea from 26 to 36 AD during the reign of Tiberius. Tacitus writes the following, Christus, the founder of the Christian name, was put to death by Pontius Pilate, procreator of Judea in the reign of Tiberius. But the pernicious superstition, repressed for a time, broke out again, not only through Judea, where the mischief originated, but through the city of Rome also. It would confirm the following, that Jesus did exist, that he was the founder of Christianity, that Jesus was put to death by Pilate, that Christianity originated in Judea with Jesus, and that Christianity later spread to Rome. Skeptic Interjection 1. Could Tacitus have taken his information from Christian sources? Answer. Because of his position as a professional historian and not as a commentator, it is more likely that Tacitus referenced government records over Christian testimony. It is also possible Tacitus received some of his information from his friend and fellow secular historian Pliny the Younger. Yet, even if Tacitus referenced some of Pliny's sources, it would be out of his character to have done so without critical investigation. An example of Tacitus criticizing testimony given to him even from his dear friend Pliny is found here in Annals 55. Tacitus distinguishes between confirmed and hearsay accounts almost 70 times in his history. If he felt this account of Jesus was only rumor or folklore, he would have issued his usual disclaimer that this account was unverified, but he did not. Skeptic Interjection 2. Could this passage have been a Christian interpolation or forgery? Answer. Judging by the critical undertones of this passage, it is highly unlikely. Tacitus refers to Christianity as a superstition and an insuppressible mischief. Furthermore, there is not a surviving copy of Tacitus' annals that does not contain this passage. There is no verifiable evidence of tampering of any kind in this passage. Skeptic Interjection 3. Why is this passage not quoted by the early church fathers? Answer. Due to the condescending nature of Tacitus' testimony, early Christian authors most likely would not have quoted such a source, assuming Tacitus' writings were even available to them. However, our actual answer comes from the context of the passage itself. Nothing in Tacitus' statement mentions anything that was not already common knowledge among Christians. It simply provides evidence of Jesus' existence, which is a topic not debated at this point in history. Let's move on to Lucian of Samosata. Lucian was a second century Greek satirist and rhetorician who scornfully describes his views of early Christianity. Though he ridicules the Christians and their Christ, his writings confirm Jesus was executed via crucifixion and that he was the founder of Christianity. 
He says, The Christians, you know, worship a man to this day. The distinguished personage who introduced their novel rites and was crucified on that account. It was impressed on them by their original lawgiver that they are all brothers from the moment that they are converted and deny the gods of Greece and worship their crucified sage and live after his laws. What this passage reveals and how it confirms the biblical account. 1. That Jesus did exist. 2. That Jesus was the founder of Christianity. 3. Jesus was worshipped by his followers. and 4. That Jesus suffered death by crucifixion. Skeptic Interjection 1. Can we consider Lucian's testimony reliable, due to the source being a literary work? Answer. Lucian's comments revolved around historical events. In Lucian's work, The Way to Write History, he openly criticizes his contemporaries who distort history to flatter their masters or those who fill in historical gaps with their personal conjecture. He writes, The historian's one task is to tell the thing as it happened. He may nurse some private dislikes, but he will attach far more importance to the public good and set the truth high above his hate. For history, I say again, has this and only this for its own. If a man will start upon it, he must sacrifice to no god but truth. He must neglect all else. Skeptic Interjection 2 Is it possible Lucian received his knowledge from Christian sources, or that this passage is an interpolation or a forgery? Answer. Seeing how adamant Lucian was in regards to historical accuracy and critical investigation, our answer is an emphatic no. As to the passage being a Christian forgery, chances are that the reference to Jesus would be far more favorable if this were so. Lucian refers to Jesus only as a man, a lawgiver, and a sage. Human, not divine, descriptions. He never once refers to Jesus as a god. Furthermore, there isn't anything in the above statement that reveals what wasn't already known. It merely asserts that Jesus lived, preached, and died. Remember, at this time, Christians were trying to prove Jesus' divinity, not his existence. Next, we're going to look at Flavius Josephus. And before we get started on the details of Josephus, I'd like to make a personal comment. And that is that I've heard for a very long time that this Josephus quote was an obvious forgery. But if you look into it, you'll find that there are really only two different versions of this particular account of Josephus' um, talking about Jesus. He actually talks about uh, Jesus in another account that's not disputed, but this particular one is. And um, what you'll find is that there's really two versions, and they don't really differ in anything important at least when we're arguing Jesus' existence, because they both admit that he existed, that he was crucified by Pontius Pilate, that he had many followers, both Jews and Gentiles, and that he performed what Josephus calls wonderful works. I think one reason that this particular passage of Josephus has been singled out for accusations and even misinformation is that it's a very good account from a very prominent historian who lived at that time and would have probably interviewed the apostles themselves. All of that being said, there is a lot to debate and to talk about about this particular passage and the other passage that Josephus mentions Jesus in. So let's look into it. This is what was written. Now, there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ, and when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at first did not forsake him, for he appeared to them alive again the third day, as the divine prophets had foretold these and ten thousand other wonderful things concerning him. And the tribes of Christians so named for him are not extinct at this day. This is what the other version reads. Now, there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. And when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those that loved him at first did not forsake him. And the tribes of Christians so named from him are not extinct to this day. Skeptic Interjection 1 this passage contains proclamations in order